Hi, I'm Sanma Banawan, and I've made this video as a prerequisite to the 15 mark questions. So you should definitely know everything in this video regarding 1D and 2D arrays before you start to attempt the 15 mark questions. Also, at the end of this video, there's a small mistake in the textbook regarding 2D arrays. I just want to make sure that you fix that mistake in the textbook and you don't make that same mistake in your exam on Thursday. So let's start with 1D arrays. Let's say we have this array called customer ID. We're going to declare customer ID of type array from 1 to 7. So there are seven pieces of data and they're all the type of integer. So essentially, here's what's happening in your computer. Your computer has allocated some space, given it a name called customer ID, and it's ready to receive the data of seven integers. The first data can be accessed by customer ID square brackets one, the second one customer ID square brackets two, and so on till customer ID square brackets seven. Now, typically, Cambridge might already have some data saved in the array, even if they don't show you the data. So, for example, you might have customer IDs equal to 111, the second one is 222, 333, 444, 555, 666, and 777. So, this is how it's going to look in memory. Now, suppose we have this for loop pseudocode. What's going to be the output if we run this code? So the code says for count, and we assign to count from one to seven, print customer ID of count, next count. So let's trace this code. For count, we're gonna assign one to count, print customer ID of one, so the output is one, one, one. Next count, count equals two, print customer ID of two, so the output is two, two, two. Next count, count equals three. Print customer ID of three. The output is three, three, three. Next count, count equals four. Print customer ID of four, which is gonna print four, four, four. Next count, count now equals five. Print customer ID of five, which is five, five, five. Next count, count equals six. Print customer ID of six, which the output is now going to be six, six, six. And finally, count equals 7, print customer ID of 7, which is going to output 777. Sometimes you might want to format your database. You, want to might, you might want to initialize all the data to zero. Maybe it's a new month. So now I'm going to start off with customer 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then maybe later input the new customer numbers. So here's the code to be able to initialize or set all the data in this array to zero. Again, because this is a one-dimensional array and we know the size of the array, the most suitable loop to use is a for loop. So the code reads, for count, we assign to count from one until seven, customer ID of count will now be initialized to zero or assign zero to customer ID of count, next count. So in the first iteration, count equals one, customer ID of one becomes zero and it's changed in our array in memory. Count equals two, customer ID of two equals zero. Count equals three, customer ID of three equals zero. Count equals 4, customer ID of 4 equals 0. Count equals 5, customer ID of 5 equals 0. Count equals 6, customer ID of 6 equals 0. And finally, count equals 7, customer ID of 7 is now equal to 0. So we finished initializing our database to 0, our customer ID array to 0. And now we want to input new customers for the month of May 2023. Again, because we're inputting data into an array and we know the size of the array, the most efficient loop to use is a for loop. So the code reads for count, assigned to count from one to seven, input customer ID of count, next count. So when count equals one, we're gonna input the first customer ID. Suppose the first customer ID is 501. Count equals two, input customer ID of two, 502 is our customer ID for the second one. Count equals three, input customer ID of three. So we're gonna input 503. Count equals four, input customer ID of four. So we're gonna input 504. Count equals five, input customer ID of five. 505 is our customer ID. Count equals six, we input 506 into our array. And finally, count equals seven, we're gonna input 507 into the array. So another important code related to 1D arrays is being able to iterate through the elements of the array 
in a linear search. So we're searching for a particular value and checking if that value exists in the array or not. Again, we're going to use a for loop, okay? But before we start the for loop, we should input the search value. What are you looking for? For example, you know, we input the search value. For example, we input, we're looking, we're checking if 505 exists in the array. After we input the search value, we'll start our for loop. So for count goes from one to seven. We have a selection statement. If customer ID of count is equal to the search value, then we're going to print the search value is stored in this count, okay? And if next count. So this is a for loop that's going to iterate seven times. And inside these seven times, there's an if statement to check if the particular element we're pointing at, so whether it's customer ID 1 or customer ID 2 or customer ID 3 onwards is equal to the search value. So again, let's let's trace this code. So count equals one. If customer ID of count is equal to search value, that returns false. Next count. Count equals two. If customer ID of two is equal to the search value, that returns false. Next count. Count equals three also returns false. Next count. Count equals four also returns false. Next count. Count equals five returns true. So we're going to print search value, which is 505, stored in 5 to show the index where the search value is stored in. Next count, count equals 6 returns false, and next count, count equals 7 returns false, and we're finished with this simple linear search. Let's summarize four typical pieces of code related to one-dimensional arrays. So number one, to print data from one-dimensional array, we use a for loop to iterate through all the elements and print the data. If we want to initialize all the data, we're going to use a for loop and then we're going to assign. For example, we could assign the empty string to customer ID of count. That's actually a better thing to assign because if the customer ID starts with 000, it can't be a number. It would have to be a string. Another um, code is inputting data into an array. So again, it's a for loop where we input data. The most important thing is when you're dealing with arrays, do not forget those square brackets. If you forget the square brackets, the examiner is going to be like, ah, this person doesn't know arrays well. And finally, we looked at the search, ser linear search. So we have to input a search value, use a for loop, and inside the for loop use a selection such as an if statement. And try, and once the element is found, a message will be displayed that it's found. Now let's have a look at two-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays are declared as, for example, declare num water array one to seven rows while we have one to four columns and they're all of type integer. So the reason I called it num water is because, you know, it's going to store the customers how many bottles of water they ordered each week, those big blue bottles, how many they ordered to be delivered each week. So let's say we had some data already ready. And so the num water is equal to you know, the first customer ordered two bottles of the first week, one bottle the next week, two bottles in the third week and one bottle the fourth week. Customer number two ordered one bottle in the first week, three bottles in the second week, two bottles in the third week, and two bottles in the fourth week, and so on. Customer number three ordered two bottles in the first week, two bottles in the second week, two bottles in the third week, and two bottles in the fourth week. Fourth week. So on and on. Here's the data that we have in this two-dimensional array. Let's look at how we can access the elements. So as you can see, the first element, for example, would be called num water one comma one. In pseudocode, it's written like num water one comma one. I'm going to write it the way program code usually writes it, which is num water square brackets one to show the row and square brackets one to show the column. If you look at the bottom, we have num water square brackets six to show that this is in row six and square brackets three to show that this element is in the third column. So 2D arrays need a nested for loop. They need an inner loop to iterate through the four columns and an outer loop to iterate through the seven rows. 
Suppose we want to print all the elements of the array num water, the two-dimensional array num water. So we're going to have a nested for loop. We're going to have four row is from one to seven, four column from one to four, print num water row square brackets, column square brackets. Next column to move on to the next column. And you could print a space between them if you wanted, because I want to print each customer by itself. I want to I want an align and next row. So let's trace this nested for loop and see what's happening. At first we have row equals one for row we have assigned to it one for column assigned to it one print num water one one so the output will be two. Next column. Column now equals two. Print num water one two so the output is one because the person in the first customer ordered one bottle in the second week. Next column. Column equals three. Print num water of one three which is going to be printing two. Next column, column equals four. Print num water one four, which is going to print that one. And then print, we finished the inner for loop. I have one statement after that, which is part of the rows. Print an empty line, so it's gonna print an empty line. Next row. Next row means row now equals two. And again, inside next row, we have a completely nested loop that we need to um, we need to completely iterate through the four columns. So column equals one, print num water two one, output is one. Next column, column equals two, print num water two two, it's gonna print a three. Next column, column equals three, print num water of two three, so it's going to show our two. Column now equals four, print num water two four, it's gonna print the two. And we finished the inner column loop. We're now going to print the statement, which has an empty line. So we're gonna print the empty line. Next row, row equals three, column equals one. Print num water three one, which is gonna print a two. Next column, column equals two. Print num water three two, it's gonna print a two. Next column, column equals three. Print num water three three, it's gonna print a two. Next column, column equals four, print num water three, four, it's gonna print a two. Of course, this is gonna continue for next row, and then row is gonna become four, and inside the next row, there's going to be four um, like column statements. Again, next row, row equals five, and onwards until it prints the entire, until it prints the entire two-dimensional array. All right, so coming to the textbook, um, I actually thought it was a mistake. And the reason I thought it was a mistake was because this is exactly not how Cambridge does their 2D arrays at all. Like I'm talking about even when you solve like pre-release questions, even though the pre-release questions were not 2D arrays, but they were many 1D arrays as if they were like 2D arrays. So um, this is not how Cambridge solves the questions. Sol Cambridge solves the questions the way I just showed you in the previous 2D array. So it was two nested loops where the outside is usually the row and the inside is the column. And the reason Cambridge does that is just like the example that I showed you. Usually they have a 1D array, which is, for example, the names of the students in the class and another 2D array that has their mark for English, math and science or something. So as you when you come and see the 15 more questions you'll see like how this example in the textbook is totally the opposite of what Cambridge does so please focus on the video to get the 2d array proper inshallah thank you so much for watching I will be releasing one of the 15 mark questions within 24 hours I hope and yes yeah, stay tuned for more bye bye